another mini tutorial or in this case a maxi tutorial on exchanging gearing around a tilt and turn window. On delivery of your parts you will receive a height kit, a width kit, you will receive the bottom hinges both 9mm and 13mm to the handing that you will have ordered, two sets of screws, an adaptation kit to convert to 9mm axis along with an instruction manual and a template. The first job is take a nice sharp pencil and mark the edge of the sash on all four corners. Nicely against the frame so that when we open this window we'll be able to tell the exact overlap of the sash onto the outer frame. Having opened the window we now want to check the overlap distance that it is around about 8 millimeters on both the head and the hinge side and that is within a tolerance of 2 millimeters. So now we're going to check the handle side of the window at the top for the overlap. As we can see this is already slightly lower than what it is on the side so we have got less overlap at the head consequently we have more overlap at the bottom of the window and checking the side here that's within tolerance it's indicating that the sash has dropped slightly and it may be that towards the end of the exercise we will reposition the sash and have to adjust it by re-wedging the glass within the sash which will be explained later. Remove the pin and the bigger the window clearly the heavier it's going to be so now if you want to just turn the handle and lift it out The next task is to remove the handle. Usually there are some small cover caps over the screws which you remove with a small sharp knife and then remove the screws completely out of the handle. One, two, and lift the handle out including the spindle. Don't leave that in the window if it is loose and then we start and remove all the screws all the way around the window turning that as you go along or sliding it back if it's a slider And that releases the uh, gear where the handle was. And you have to lift up the scissor stay to be able to see the screws that are at the head of the window. Finally go down the rear of the window, taking the last few remaining screws away here. All screws out. You may on some windows discover that there's also some gearing along the bottom, but on this one, because of the width, it's not necessary. So we start removing the gearing, we'll start with the where the handle goes through, that comes out neatly, and then the bottom gear, the top scissor stay, and then the corner drive, 
And finally, the rear drive that goes down the back of the window. So that's everything removed. And finally, we need to unscrew, excuse me, the bottom shoe. And we can remove that. Upon delivery of your goods, you will have received in both boxes, the height box and the width box, you will have received the 13mm axis kit. It's at this point that you need to decide which of the two kits you require, either the 13mm or the upgrade to the 9mm axis. And to identify that, you take this part and offer it against the part that you've got on your existing window frame to be able to identify which you require. So if you bring the striker key to the window frame, remembering that this one is 13mm and offer it to the one existing on the window, here you've got the comparison between how thick this piece of material is here and how thick this piece of material is across here. This one is slimmer, so therefore on this particular window frame it is a 9mm axis and you need to use the transitional kit which is supplied with the parts. Now you've determined the axis that you require, you'll either use the scissor shoe end that is supplied in the box with if it is 13 millimeters or you will use the 9 millimeter shoe end if it is a 9 millimeter and attach this to the end of here I'll show you how to do that next so the scissor shoe end has to fix onto the end of the scissor stay and you need to determine which way around it goes because they are reversible. So the easiest way to do this is to simply put it on the edge of the window alongside the other one to make sure that they line up and then it can be offered into the scissor stay. So we simply lift the scissor arm up slightly, offer the end through the hole And then, with the Torque T20 driver, you simply insert and turn clockwise a quarter turn. And that's all it needs to secure it firmly. With the corner drive that was in the width box, offer it onto the sash with the roller just above the handle. Pushing it firmly into place, and securing it with your screw. Now taking the second corner drive with the mushroom head on it from the height box, you offer that into the corner again and once more fix with one screw in the bottom and one in the side. At the same time ensuring that this slider is always to the bottom of the bottom of the window and at the top towards the top of the window to allow the next part to be offered into place. Dealing with the bottom drive gear first on the corner, we will need to mark the position where we'll need to cut the main drive that comes down from the handle. And to do that, you usually leave approximately one and a half to two millimeters from the end of the slider, ensuring that the slider is back 
mark it here and obviously doing exactly the same to the top of the sash. Having removed the drive gear that goes on the handle from the height box you determine which way around to put it in three ways. If it's a very short window you could find that there are no rollers at all on the bar. If it's a taller window you'll find that there may be two or alternatively simply just one but for best guess every time put the writing the correct way up from the bottom of the window to the top so T on TGP should be at the top now offer the drive gear into the window temporarily and whilst doing that then offer the handle in place and just put the screw in a couple of turns so that it's secure and doesn't move. Having temporarily got the drive here in place we transfer the line from the frame onto the drive gear both at the bottom and the top and with a good quality hacksaw in a firm vise cut the gearing to length. Before you remove this gearing a tip would be there is a mark in the centre of the box just transfer that mark onto the frame so when you reinsert it you know you've got it in exactly the right position. Having cut the gearing down now we can reinsert it in the correct position lining it up with the pencil mark that you left earlier. A tip is always to drop something in behind the gear and make sure the slider is all the way back and the same at the other side maybe a pencil and then one at a time remove the measure and slowly try to latch the two teeth together behind the plate. It may be that at this point you may have to introduce the handle once more and just slightly wiggle it about until you hear the click. Did you hear the way the uh, drive gear went in properly? And then slide the cover back over to trap it. And we do exactly the same at the other end. Once they're both in place, then you secure the cap with the screw and the drive gear should be in place and finish off finally with the other screws down the side of the gearing. We're now progressing onto the top of the sash to be able to fit the scissor stay and once again ensure that the bar is slid away from the teeth and then mark one and a half millimetres away from the edge for where you're going to transfer the mark onto the scissor stay. The best way of installing the scissor stay is to open it first, offer it into the corner into the euro groove and then proceed to transfer the mark onto the scissor stay ready for cutting with the hacksaw. So taking the uh, back stay out of the uh, height box the last part that you need for going around the window to attach it to the scissor stay there are a hole here with a pin there there is a square hole here and a square socket there. The two need to be engaged together and the two parts go together like this. Right, we can now offer the two parts together into the Eurogroove, back first, then slide down, checking that the points where the latch together are still 
maintained, they go together and there is a slight click as you push them in. There's a plastic connector that helps locate it. Push them in and now we try to uh, get the uh, two sets of teeth to uh, latch together. It can sometimes be a little bit difficult with this last one so you may need to use something like a light hammer just to tap it in and then let the top plate go back slide the bar across and then offer screw number one into the plate so it can't come apart and screw number two hold it in and then there is usually two screws at this point because it's carrying the weight of the window and that's the scissor stay fitted and then finally securing all the fixings in the rear hinge side of the uh, window If the sash was wider, you would have an extra part already supplied in the pack to be able to create extra locking points across the base of the window. We're now going to replace the handle onto the window and this goes in always pointing into the, towards the glass. Now this system of tilt and turn gear is actually different to a lot of the gearing that's on the market. This is a tilt before turn. So this handle position is now the tilt position, whereas on most windows out there, it would have been the opening position. So we'll secure it first with the same two screws. So now we're in a position where for the first time, we can turn the handle to release all the clip points that have been holding it firm. And by doing that, that allows us to check which direction the cams are travelling on the mechanism. As we turn the handle down, we can see which direction the rollers are moving. So that we can put an arrow here, which tells us which direction they move. Returning it now to the tilt position. This will enable us to be able to transfer a mark from the head of this roller onto the outer side of the sash, which then we transfer once more onto the main frame to identify the exact position where we're going to place the striker plates. So we've decided and determined the travel direction and now we want to take the position of the roller onto the outer sash. We need to be to the back edge of the arrow one and a half millimeters up and transfer that line onto the sash. So to replicate that twice more down this side of the uh, opening sash, it's one point, and we'll put the arrow in again, just as an aid, and that's, the, that's that side done. On this particular sash, we don't have any uh, rollers on the top, but on wider windows, you could very well find that there is one on the top. We're now dealing with the hinge side of the window. And this is where a lot of people get mixed up. A lot of people start to draw the travel direction up as it was on the other side. But in actual fact, that's exactly the wrong thing to do. The travel direction has always been downhill on the hinge side. So you draw your arrow and work to the opposite side 
and do exactly the same with the bottom roller. We're now working on the bottom of the sash and the first thing you need to do is turn the handle into the vertical position pointing upwards. Once you've got it in that position, that position is the position where the window will open. So as we transfer the point from this cam onto the outer frame, thus, this is how it operates when you introduce the actual striker. In the open position, it passes through this gap. When you travel the handle for its first point of movement to the tilt position, it moves to this position here. When you finally close the handle down to the bottom of the window, the cam travels to this part of the striker and that secures the window. And continuing working on the bottom of the sash, if you did have another locking point here, then again you need to put on the travel direction but whilst the handle is in the halfway position don't do it whilst you've got this in the open position you can choose now from the 9 or 13 millimeter axis the bottom corner hinge which is fitted into the euro groove like this and sometimes you'll need a hammer just to help it go home and then fix with screws 